100% need more space. I need a bigger garage. I need a bigger house. Something with the lift. One day, that's the dream. One day is to have a garage with the lift. All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're making more progress on the Evo build. Today's plan is to go ahead and remove the stock or the factory oil cooler and put on the new uh, Mishimoto dual oil cooler setup that I picked up um, here recently. As everyone knows, or as most of you know, if you aren't new to the channel, the motor blew in the Evo 10. Um, because of that, it threw a ride. Because of that, I have to replace the oil cooler um, in addition to the motor, obviously. So super excited to get it put on. Hopefully quality is okay. So first things first, if you haven't, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Also subscribe for weekly content as I try to post videos every week. I missed a couple weeks uh, back to back. For those that don't know, we recently had twins. So needless to say, I've been lacking sleep, but the show must go on and I really wanna get the Evo back on the road. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and start things off by opening up the Mishimoto box and finding out what this kit looks like. And hopefully, fingers crossed, that there's no fitment issues and that it works out okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on the tripod and we're gonna go ahead and get this box opened up. Okay, quality actually looks, um, to my surprise, pretty good. I can remember back in the day when Mishimoto was still fairly new, and not only myself, but pretty much everyone that I knew was a little skeptical about purchasing products from them because we just assumed it was something um, straight from China. But over time, it looks like they've definitely stepped up their work or their quality of products. And it shows with this kit here. Like I mentioned before, I believe um, this is a direct fit kit. It comes with everything necessary aside from the tools to install the kit. So you got the two coolers here because it is a dual cooler setup. Um, comes with the stainless steel braided lines, um, fittings, um, the bracketry. And if you're looking to install this yourself, you will have to remove the front bumper um, to be able to get to the factory one to remove that. Me, I've already removed the front bumper. It's been off for some time. Um, so it should be fairly quick for me to remove the factory cooler. Now the factory cooler actually sits on the passenger side, uh, right behind the front bumper, right in front of the front wheel. Uh, so it sits right here. It has this kind of like plastic air diverter thing here that I'm gonna have to remove uh, in addition to the cooler itself. Um, looks like it's being held on by a few bolts, a couple brackets, um, and it shouldn't take long at all. And normally you have to remove the lines from the block as well. Um, but because the engine is obviously out of the car, um, I already did that. So can't remember what size the bolts were or the banjo bolts were um, that went to the block. I'll try to leave that size in the video here. But I'm gonna go ahead and get that knocked out. Removal of the factory cooler should only take a couple minutes because like I said, the front bumper is already off. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and assemble the new oil cooler setup outside of the car or off the car, then get it bolted up. Um, definitely one of the easier removals on the Evo. It took all of about like what two minutes to get that finished out. But um, I forgot there was probably still oil in there, and now there's a mess. So um, got to take a minute to clean that up. Grab some of that kitty litter over there, soak that up, and then we're gonna begin the process of putting together the new oil cooler setup, and then we're gonna throw it on the car.
and my camera overheated. So if you didn't know, I'm in Arizona and the high today was like 105 and I'm in my garage and that just intensifies the heat here. So, but the oil cooler is coming together nicely, I should say. Um, it was pretty straightforward. I had to look up a video made by Mishimoto as far as how to set it up. And it's, um, like I said, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, everything seems to fit well. All the necessary hardware was provided. All that's left is to get the Phoenix put on and from there we'll connect the lines and we'll go ahead and mount it to the car. And at that point, we should be finished up. We'll pray for no leaks. Um, I won't know, obviously, if there's any leaks until we get the car running again. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get this finished up. All right, so the oil cooler setup is all put together. It's all finished up. I was pretty much ready to go into the car. Um, I did actually leave these two banjo bolts disconnected. I didn't actually go ahead and install those yet because those are going to be going to the block. Obviously, the engine's not in the car yet, so I'm actually going to save those for last, for very last. I probably should have left the plastic on the opposite end so that way nothing crawls up in there. I'll probably just mask it off with some masking tape. Um, and it should be good to go. So to mount it onto the car, it's gonna mount in that same position as the factory unit, um, and you will use the factory screws. You do have to remove the screw here, I believe it is, because we're gonna use this as one of the mounting brackets for, uh, for one of the screws. Um, so that should take all of about like two minutes or so to actually get this bolted up. Um, fingers crossed, hopefully. I say that now and it becomes like a complete pain, but hopefully not. So let's go ahead and get this finished up. And yeah, we should be good to go after that. All right, several gallons of sweat and a shirt change later, we have the unit all mounted up. And I actually think it looks pretty cool. Um, the only problem that I have with it is that it doesn't seem like it is as secure as I would like. Um, and it's being mounted via the mounting point. So there's one right up here, and then there's uh, the bracket that goes here into the crash beam, and it mounts there. But even with those two mounts that were provided, um, it still kind of seems like it's a little flimsy. So I actually, I mean, unless I'm doing it wrong, unless it's being mounted wrong, uh, which very well could be the case, uh, I may end up trying to figure out maybe a bracket that could go from maybe this bolt here um, to here or, or maybe here, I don't know. Uh, but aside from that, it seems pretty solid. And I am excited to get it all ran or get the lines ran and to the motor once it's in the car. Now, now this being a dual oil cooler setup, it is gonna increase the oil capacity, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. In my eyes or in my head, it seems like it'd be more beneficial. But yep, with that being finished up, we're just one step closer to getting the Evo 10 back on the road. So next week, I'm hoping to get the motor assembled uh, getting it prepped, getting it ready to go in the car. I actually kind of want to like spot clean the engine bay a little bit. Uh, I don't actually have a pressure washer or anything like that, but I don't really have a way to move it um, up and down the driveway because um, it's even without the motor and transmission in there, it's still kind of heavy. So if you could tell me what you guys think of the, of the new oil cooler setup. Uh, was it a waste of money? Was it cool? I don't know. I think it's cool. Well, one, it was absolutely necessary to change it but should I just went with an OEM one, another factory replacement one, I don't know. But I appreciate you guys checking out the video. If you haven't, um, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for weekly content and I'll see you guys in the next video.